Hello guys, welcome back to another video of my F1 2019 career mode. Today, here at the Chinese Grand Prix for what is the 1000th Formula 1 race. If you haven't seen the last video, go back and watch that before you see this one. I'm just going to quickly dive into the R&D. You can see one pass, well, and one failed. Luckily, thank God, the powertrain is actually on the car for this race which is good for this track obviously trying to very much a power track especially down that long back straight especially with DRS and the Honda not the best um, engine as you can see it was the, the last one on the development but we're going to redo the um, error upgrade and do a reduction a weight reduction upgrade as well so that will come in at the next race in Baku but let's go we can have a look now at the um, difficult and decided to turn it down to 97 because I didn't want it to be bored the races to be boring for you guys and, uh, and I'd been bored like, not boring but they hadn't been exciting for me personally recording them so obviously I just edit them so you see the most it exciting parts I have to go for every single lap and the race is like think back to Australia after the pit stop I cut to the last lap I had to do all those laps in between but didn't show them so we're gonna have another look at the R&D and what we're actually going to do is obviously we've got a lot of power tracks coming up we've got Baku coming up so we're going to do another upgrade on the power train side so we're gonna have three upgrades on the go going into Baku but let's go then to qualifying. Welcome to Shanghai, China, for what I've no doubt is going to be a fantastic F1 qualifying session. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximizing top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible, hang on into the corners and max out down the straights? Top speed is a key factor for this circuit. Even if you can achieve the same lap time as someone running less wing than you, chances are you'll find overtaking difficult if you have too much drag. So as we start qualifying here, we go on to our first qualifying lap. I just wanted to talk about the track and my thoughts on the Johnny Grand Prix. Well, track-wise, not the actual race because see, it weren't a great of races in real life. But I do. China, it's not really one of my all like time favourites. Well, I'll tell you that a favourite track when we get to it. But it's a track that kind of suits my driving style, and I am I've been very strong in the past. I was strong at China on last year's game. I'm pretty sure I was strong year before and on 2016 as we come to the end of the lap a couple of mistakes on it I think I actually did my career mode I was unbeaten in China I think I did five seasons that year um, so yeah not the best of laps but as you did say, it was one of my stronger tracks as we do an awful lap um, But yeah, we, we skip on that lap. Only good enough for P20. <laughs> I say only good enough. You can't pretty much. You can't get much worse. In fact, you can't get much worse than P20. But we skip to the end of Q1. Then we're going to have one more run. And in fact, the point that across the line, we're actually going to be able to um, have two attempts at getting on, getting into Q2. So you go through um, turn one now. You can see we're up, but we're gone down for a split second. We're back up to be skip on further around the lap onto the long, very, very long right hander. You can see we've set two personal best sectors. We skip as we go onto the pit straight, onto pit straight, onto the long back straight. And there's a big, big mistake coming out of the hairpin, and that has made us lose all the time. We've managed to get it back in the green, but we're only going to go quicker by a couple of hundredths in the end. And on our second run, the tyres are gone. 
PRT awful sectors so from back to back to back we're going to be P20 on the grid a hat trick of qualifying last not the best you can see Vettel top the session Hamilton second um, Kibitza Russell I think Lucas Weber in that as well not the best of sessions um, but yeah and there was me saying to try not one of my stronger tracks yeah I just still haven't got to grips with this game yet um, you can see we're, we're, we're losing the rivalry with Alex Albon but we have got a decent amount of R&D points now which we can have another look at in meanwhile so we've got 315 R&D points but we did do those upgrades before the kind of the weekend started but let's go to the race then where it is going to be a long one for us it's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. We're here in the Yangtze River Delta today, home of the 16 corners that make up the Shanghai International Circuit. 54% of this 3.3 mile lap is taken at full throttle and we'll be getting up to speeds of around 200 miles an hour with DRS assisting the cars down the back straight before they break into the sharp hairpin at turn 14. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Let's start by discussing Robert Kubica. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Valtteri Bottas and Gasly, Magnussen, Ricardo, Hülkenberg and Roman Grosjean, Butler, Raikkonen, Lance Stroll and Perez, Albon, Norris, Lucas Faber and George Russell, Brown and Robert Kubica takes the last spot on the grid and with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So Robert Kubica then taking an engine penalty, so we won't actually start last, we'll just start 19th. Great. <laughs> um, but the strategy, um, fairly simple, one stop, a boring one stop, another boring one stop. Um, but yeah, I can't believe that Codemasters didn't make a big deal of the first Chinese Grand Prix in Korea, even when like quick races, for the fact it is the 1000th Formula 1 race. But as we start the race back to back, just like we did in Bahrain, I forgot we I, I forgot I had the formation lap on, but this time I tried to go around, I think it was Raikkonen. Um, hopefully, one race we will actually do the formation lap. We take our positions on the grid then. It's a five red lights come on. It's a Ferrari 1-2. Then it's Hamilton. And then the Red Bull and Max Verstappen. It's lights out and away we go. Two minutes. The two Ferraris get away well. Up front we've got a decentish start. We're going to try and go to the outside. Off Robert Kubica. He's got a good start ahead of us. But we're going to go very, very, very wide. On the grass. Lose the back end. And that's us. That's us back into last place not like we went back far starting p19 but now we haven't got the best position obviously we're gonna go though we're gonna lick the stamp and send it danny rick style down the inside we're gonna get both williams and lando norris and potentially our f2 teammate here lucas weber but i think he is gonna fend us off with side by side through the sort of maggots and beckett's long left and right handers he's gonna 
to send it round the outside, but we're going to get him on the inside. Now Weber coming under pressure from Lando Norris, as Vettel leads from Leclerc, from Hamilton, from the two Red Bulls, and Bottas in the background. Uh, Kapitza, I think it is, having a look at his teammate. But here we come now, currently P16, I believe it is, ahead of Lucas Weber. We come to the end of that, we're going to go for a lunge on... Lance Stroll, he just cuts us up to be honest, I don't really know why I went for that lunge, it wasn't really needed, he'd already turned into the corner, so we are going to stay behind him here, but we could possibly get a run into Turmo, we're going to have a little look to his outside and maybe, maybe swap him a dummy, like I think we did as we hit the back of him, and we go a bit wide, Lucas Weber straight up our inside there, I don't think we got damage from that. Obviously the damage has already been done in the position loss to our F2 teammate and one of our rivals. But Wape has gone now and we have got Lando Norris on the back of us. But he isn't going to go for it. I thought he would go down our inside then but he didn't. Which was a bit surprising. I think that was Sebastian Vettel was in the fast lap of the race. But we've caught the back of Lucas Weber again. If we move on a couple of laps. Now onto lap 4. And we're quite a way back, and we're going to send it again to the inside. I don't know why I went for that, but it's going to pay off here. We're going to maybe get Lucas Weber on traction, just like it was that one. We're side by side through the yes section. We're going to squeeze him a bit more this time, though. But we've gone a bit deep. He's on our outside, and he's going to squeeze us into the apex of the corner. And he does just about stay ahead. We're going to maybe have a look to his outside, but he squeezes us out. We're going to have to wait. For either this left hander or the back straight. And it is going to have to be the back straight. To defence the inside, so we're going to say, okay, that's fine. We'll go to the outside. Very late, maybe just about putting the wheel on the grass. I'm going to go right round his outside in, at the hairpin. And that is a job well done. We go into the final corner. And on to lap five. But Lucas Weber are going to have another go to re-overtake us now and so to maybe Lando Norris there goes Weber and there goes Norris we're going to slot in and go back down the inside of Lucas Weber honestly we're just doing dive bombs left right and centre and it's only that five I thought I'd kind of sort my driving style out I wasn't really this is how I used to drive just dive bombing everyone everywhere but <laughs> We have managed to stay ahead of him. But yet again, we go very, very, very wide, completely off the track. Weber's through, and maybe now George Russell can have a go at getting past us. Which I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Just think back to the last episode in Bahrain. We're going to send it down the inside of Lucas Weber. Honestly. Forget Daniel Ricciardo for dive bombs. Just look at this. this is Lucas Weber are going to go to our outside. The hand of rage comes up. I'm not really too sure what really happened there. I know I squeezed him a bit, but he shouldn't really. He was entitled to go there. Here we go, turn. The ERS up to a million. And here comes Lucas Weber again. Past us on the straight. We're going to go left, right or middle, or we're going to go down the inside again, there's contact again. And we are past our German teammate from F2. I don't think we are though, we're going to have to go to the outside, we're completely off the track. We're still side by side, this is like Leclerc Verstappen at Silverstone. Now here, we're still just, we're just ahead. Just a front wing ahead going into turn one, but he has bucked off. And now here he comes again, passes, but as we look at the damage, you can see our front um, left of the front wing is damaged, it's yellow, which is very, very bad. And I was wondering why I was getting so much understeer, I thought it was just the car, because they have made the cars a bit more interesting this year, but it was actual damage, I'm not sure where I got that from as we just get absolutely done over there. There's Norris on our inside, the bits are on our outside I think it was, but we've managed to just stick it down the inside and stay ahead of them. 
but yeah, we're in a bit of a awkward position now. Do we pit? Get a new front wing, or we just carry on going? I don't really think I want to stay out with a damaged front wing. I'm not really too sure where I got it from. There were so many points where it was so close. I think it's either from um, when we dive bomb Weber and the hairpin, or when it, we dive bomb Lance Strong. There, the two. You have to. You have to let me know in the comments where I actually did lose it. But here. On lap 12, we're going to make our one and only stop onto the hard compound tyre. We are going to though make a change for the front wing because I don't really want to do however many laps are left with practically half a front wing. So they are going to change it here. We go onto the hard tyre. We'll have to see what happens in the rest of the race now. Hopefully, it's not just like um, Australia was. But we'll have to wait and see. Cam How have we got the pace? I said earlier on in the video that um, it was my stronger track. China, as you can see, um, out of the race does go Danny Ricardo. As we've got a replay of it now. He's going into turn one very, very, very very slowly I'm not too sure I'm guessing it was electrical that the issue was and he pulls off and actually I think he hits the barrier there we can have a look on the onboard I did think when I first looked at this that maybe it was gearbox I thought he was stuck in gear but you can see he just shift down into second gear so it weren't that but he doesn't actually hit the barrier but very 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 close you can see he was skipping on we are actually catching Robert Kubica, so I think he might have a problem despite him taking engine penalties before the race. It was Gibbon to lap 27 of 28. We're right on the back of the Polish driver. We're going to have a go into the hairpin. Going on as we're on the penultimate lap, we've done a lot of pushing. I haven't pushed so hard ever as we pull to the outside and fly past. Mr. Williams there. Decent, decent job. Obviously, it hasn't been another the greatest of exciting races again. Um, still definitely sorting things out with that. Um, but yeah, we skip him to the final lap. Vettel wins it, gets the first lap of the race, but it's taken away from him, from Hamilton. So the final point will go to the Mercedes driver be round the final corner then and we will finish in a lonely P18 at the Chinese Grand Prix for what for the race 1000 of the F1 sport that's a fantastic performance from Ferrari it hardly looked in doubt Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. in the best of races we had a bit of action with Weber and um, Norris and Kibitza obviously that was the result then Hamilton splitting the two Ferraris in the end Hamilton getting the jump on Leclerc so it's another win I, I think that's Vettel's second win correct me on that if um, it's wrong but four points at the top we are still yet to score but we're not bottom of the championship which is good Kibitz is there but the two were, ba were basically in a 
a Big Mac kind of William sandwich such as both me and Alpen are in between George Russell and Robert Kubica but they're, they're still yet to score as well only eight, eight teams have got a point this year but I just get bumped back into the paddock we're taking another blow in the rivalry with Alex Alban and we're going to get some more R&D points here we may maybe possibly could do another upgrade but we'll have to wait and see that's another 200 points that puts us on 606 points going into um, the Ar Azerbaijan Grand Prix I just call it back here, it's easier um, but actually here as the M is telling us um, we've got the transcripts here between um, um, Lucas Weber and Devin Butler um, if you want to post a video you can read through them let's we'll just stay on them for a minute so there we go with them so obviously um, Devin Butler going to be a little bit more showmanship but we've got to the point of the season where we can actually pick another rival because obviously you have your teammate then you have another rival that you can pick and if you didn't know, if you pick kind of the ones from the story, so if you pick Devon Butler or you pick Lucas Weber, you can get extra XP. So I decided to pick Lucas Weber over Devon Butler just for the fact how the past races have gone. We've been closer to the Alfa Romeos than probably the McLarens. I know we've been having battles with Lando Norris, but we've never really seen signs, which in other words would be Devon Butler. Um, so we're going to pick. Lucas Weber and have another look at the R&D then um, so yeah so we've got these upgrades we're going to do and we can't do another upgrade which I'd love to do um, so we've got we've got the rate reduction we've got error um, the redo error upgrade and now we've got the um, general wear upgrade so just to quickly recap of what we'll have coming we'll have powertrain rate reduction aero and now um the general wear coming in for backy fingers crossed but that's it for this video guys hope you enjoyed if, if you want to see more of this content then hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video if you enjoyed it hit the like button if you didn't enjoy it hit the dislike button simple as that but until back you goodbye